I thought I'd address just um, what I saw after watching the film, after being with my team, and and kind of just looking now through what eight games is where where we are. Um, the reality of, of where we currently are is uh, the Boston College loss was, um, I think, a um, a surprise in the way the game played out, and I think it hurt our team more than what I had anticipated. I thought our team played sluggish um, and uninspired after watching it. Um, they were right; we were right by assignment a lot of the time on Saturday, uh, but not right by mindset and edge and emotion and passion and and um, there were some lingering effects uh, as I see it on film met with my team and uh, I didn't see it in practice during the week um, as much sometimes it's harder in practice because it's just workmanlike um, but I did see it on Saturday and so I think there's there's a resetting that's going on and I'm not going to say reset because I don't know yet if it is reset um, but I think there's a resetting in a, in a team that is um, has had some early success, is now redefining themselves against different opponents and now reframing um, what the, um, this game will look like as far as moving forward. And so there's a lot of different kind of backstories going on, which I think have just created some, again, I call interference uh, as what if this and what if that and, and we need this one or we need that one and what could this mean rather than just the day-to-day -day grind of week number nine in college football. Um, and so uh, I'd love, and I'm not presenting any of that as um, excuses. I'm just saying matter-of-factly, now that I've seen it, now that I've watched it, now that I've been with my team, and then looking for um, the best way to approach, I, I think that has had something to do with it. Um, I look forward to, uh, man, um, I look forward to this game, this challenge, um, and I'm always excited to take on really challenging things. and. All of these contexts and stories kind of are coming together as this team is shaping for the next, what I'm calling last third of the season. So two thirds are done, um, uh, and and a significant test starting the the last third, which is not only mental but also physical. And again, I think there's a reset that is happening, um, and I'm encouraging and I'm pushing for. And now, how fast we get that done, you know, we'll we'll all see. I think at the same time. My issue right now um, with our team, um, but also the defense in individually, is, is the assignments aren't as much of an issue to me right now as mindset and how they're going about um, with, what, with what passion and with what concentration and with, with what intent. Um, and so um, the assignments are certainly a huge part of playing football no matter what the scheme is. Um, the exceptional teams, though, there's, a, there's an air and a swagger and a confidence and, and an optimism and a belief that comes with repeated success. And, and that, is, uh, that's, that needs to be in place versus uh, option teams as well because at any time, as we saw last year, there was, man, the, um, the control of the game was really in our favor, the majority, but one player off here or there, we've seen it a couple times this year, the, play can go, the ball can go a long ways, which about the third or fourth or fifth play against Clemson, there was one that that happened. And so it can happen against anybody. The best player on the field on a Georgia Tech offense is their quarterback. He's the best athlete. He's the best leader. He's the most dynamic player. He's the most capable, um, usually the fiercest competitor. And and I, I really like him. I think he's very good. Um, and I think, he, again, as most quarterbacks go, their teams goes, their teams go, it's no, no different with the option, and uh, maybe even more so. They do a really nice job. There's a very clear number, uh, uh, kind of number of plays they're going to play because their offense, the nature of their offense, and it keeps the ball so well. Um, but they're fast and they're talented and they're really sound, and, um, and they manage the points really well. And that's all part of Georgia Tech's complementary nature of how they play football. And so um, possessions are huge. And your offense doesn't get many. Um, and so you have to play really well defensively um, and get off the field uh, as much as you can to give enough possessions to your offense to have a chance to score. And the way they're set up, they make it difficult to score. Staying on your feet is, is the key. And because uh, Pitt was kind of cutting us a little bit and a lot of people was on their back and they're, you know, you got to be able to get back up after that. So I think that's going to be the toughest thing as far as like uh, – defeating a block and making a play. I still felt like I could have brung back 
more energy than what I brought to the table. And, uh, you know, uh, definitely me and Chris Peace left a lot of plays out there, a lot. Uh, so, you know, there's still a lot that energy that I can bring and that the whole team can bring. You only play against this offense once a year. So, you know, out of all the years that we do, all the time we spend playing football, we only play triple option one week out of the year. So it's always going to be different. Um, the key thing is you just got to do your assignment and trust that, you know, everyone around you is doing what they're supposed to do. Um, that's where really the big plays happened last year was like one one touchdown, the first touchdown was completely my fault just because I did Jordan Mack's job and Jordan Mack did his job perfectly and I didn't do mine. And, you know, a pitch gets out and there's a touchdown. So you just got to do your job and trust everyone around you to do their job and play hard. And, you know, the how we played them, I mean, we only played 44 plays, which was nothing. We really limited them for most of the day. And, you know, hopefully this year we can, can get better and get a win. We just need to get back to just, you know, playing with that edge that we had. I think we went from early on in the season, we were happy with any kind of success that we were getting. And it was all about just those little victories, whether it be playing William and Mary, you know, when we beat William and Mary, you would have thought we just won the Super Bowl just because it was a step forward for us. When we, when we got third down stops, every one of them was a huge deal. We were out there and we were, you know, celebrating with each other. This last game, you know, it was kind of disheartening. We started, we started the game with a three and out and, um, you know, it was an incomplete pass on third down and kind of no one even celebrated when we walked off the field. It was kind of just like nonchalant, just kind of walk off. Like we were just out there to be out there. We weren't really enjoying ourselves. and um. We need to start taking advantage of every opportunity that we have because, you know, they're not guaranteed and um, we need to just get back to having fun and playing with that grittiness and that edge that we had earlier in the year and just, you know, not everyone gets to be in our position, not everyone gets to play college football and for us to kind of go out there and basically just throw our helmet out there for an entire game, which is basically what we did in Pittsburgh on defense, I mean, we played assignment, assignmently, assignment sound. We were, we were pretty assignment sound. We, we were doing our job, but it, it was the, the mindset was a little off. And so we can, you know, get back to playing, you know, our UVA football. Get back to believing in and playing that new standard that we were preaching. Then, you know, we can write this ship. We're happy that we took advantage of the early part of the schedule. I think we dropped the ball the past two weeks, um, and I think that's just plain for everybody to see. So. We're happy with the success we had early, but that means nothing right now. Um, we need to win football games now, and the next four games that we have are all winnable. Um, every game in this conference is winnable. Anybody can beat anybody every single week. So um, we're excited to see where we can take this.